myself in because hi panda panda Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm a dog mom to three rescue dogs and the latest addition to family Panda arrived around 10 weeks ago. There she is. Hello Panda. And on this channel here I document our journey and what we're up to, what we're training, etc. And this video will be about our trainings and what we started implementing. As it will be quite a big video, I decided to split it into two parts. So part one would be um, household manners and generally everything we did right at the beginning and when she arrived into our multi-dog household so I have already two dogs here one is the fellow Wadi dog who's a bit older than her and who's with me since a year he's deaf and very highly anxious and the other one is a senior dog is a bully breed he's around nine and a half years old already and very calm very chill dog so I will talk about this what we also did with like household manners counter surfing management bearing calmness etc the whole jazz I will do a separate video and in this video I'm going to focus on quickly go over our challenges so what were our main issues outside what were we working on and what did we do about it this is all games based training so it's fun it's efficient and it's transferable to different situations so my dog is a rescue dog my dog is a street dog however these bits and bobs are also relevant for you if you have any other type of dog and you would like to just maybe start training or maybe you're looking for some inspiration on what you could do with your dog so we will talk about things like two paws on magic hand catch middle etc and without any further ado let's get started so in concept dog training or games based dog training we talk about concepts and one of the main concepts for panda was disengagement so we are currently working on a disengagement disengagement is the ability to move away from things that are of her interest that are generally not of my interest of her having an interest in it. and most often these are things where i wish she would mind her own business and would not be interested in but this is not how the world works right so I have to show her that there is a value in leaving things alone that are maybe scary, that there is value in doing something else instead. So this was obviously one of the main things and this relates to being able to disengage from other dogs. So this could be have a better recall or improved recall, but also to be less reactive when on leash. Um, Panna has quite strong or had quite strong leash reactivity. So wanting to say hello or being like quite a frustrated greeter, starting to bark, to launch in the leash at other dogs, um, being a bit rough and saying hello, like literally chasing towards a dog and being like, hello, here I am, um, which is not obviously the most appropriate way to greet dogs. And we live in London, so we cannot avoid dogs. So basically there is no option to not be around dogs. So this is something we definitely needed to work on. And um, yes, generally like chasing things, um, again, disengagement comes in handy to learn to stick with me, um, but also to be generally just able to listen outside and see value in hanging out with me, because obviously free roaming dogs, and especially a dog who's never been with humans, who is now in the middle of adolescence, so the teenage of puberty and yeah, so it's something where I clearly have to show her the value that it's fun to hang out with me. And then lastly, we have leash walking. Um, well, loose leash walking or at least stopping to pull. So especially in the morning, she loves to go for her walkies and she pulls like a train. So this is something I work on continuously and we have really, really good success already. So I will show you videos where you can see how she's able to focus and also able to look at me and focus on me and concentrate and listen. So the go-to standard training bit is DMT, Distraction Mark Treat. And I already mentioned this in the video before uh, where I introduced Panda to you all and I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I will just link the video down below. So I highly recommend you're gonna check this out. But DMT, seriously, if I could choose one training to this would be it. So distraction mark treat in a nutshell is you help your dog to stay calm when there is distraction. Highly, highly recommend you gonna check this out because it's highly relevant. And also in the description box in the other video, I popped down a free of charge ebook from Absolute Dogs where they talk about DMT and how you can implement this for your dog. Then one of the first things we actually trained, and this might not be the normal go-to you would train on the outside, you would usually start training this on the inside in the house, but with her, she offered this behavior actually, so I just shaped it. And it's something she really enjoys, so we keep working on it. And this is two paws on. And two paws on is basically, as you can see in the video here, 
where she puts two of her front paws on anything and, and this could be any object so we usually just use tree trunks on the outside or something we find so yeah something she really enjoys doing and she generally always puts her paw somewhere so um, this was a behavior I could just shape so shaping means she don't offer it and I use it for um, yeah for training purposes to basically reward and focus on these behaviors so these are behaviors I would like to keep. Two Paws On is a game from Absolute Dogs and Two Paws On can help with the concept of confidence so they they are in charge they have something to do they know what they're doing it's quite a power pose even Rambo loves it so um, I think it's a great game also for senior dogs to keep it obviously safe but it's a great confidence booster because it's quite easy to do. Also optimism, they are in charge, they can do something, it's a positive experience. They can help with arousal levels, so basically being able to think in arousal but also um, making it fun um, as well as keeping the focus and this was the main thing for me to really get her to focus on me and I seriously love using this. So we have our certain spots in the, in the forest where we do this every day but also we do it like just randomly but yeah Panda loves to pause on. And I already mentioned the concept, but generally two paws on can help with listening to you. So to really focus on you as a person, to become more interesting for your dog. It can help with generally your relationship because you're doing something fun together. It can help on leash walking because your dog naturally looks to you a bit more. But it can also be just a really fun conversation starter to just say, hey, two paws on and you got the focus and now you can work on something. And you train this relatively easily. So generally, if your dog is anyways offering this behavior, you just shape it. But if your dog might not be offering, you pick an object and you wait until your dog interacts with the object. When they do, and this could be sniffing or putting a paw on or whatever, if they interact with it positively, you reward and you wait. You can throw a bit of food away and when they turn back and engage again, you again reward until you have the behavior you want and then you shape this behavior and this behavior will be two paws on. Linked to this, we have platform introduction or platform work. And platform work is basically what I call it four paws on. So I want her from going from two paws on something basically jumping up or going up onto this thing with a full body. And this is a game that can help with focus, with calmness, but also with basic moves and stability. Our vet actually said that she was lacking a bit of muscles when she arrived and she has built so many muscles and I just want her to be able to be flexible and to just build them up in a, in a way that is kind of shaped. Um, so again, you would start to shape the behavior you would have your dog interact and you can ask them to come up or to give a help cue or whatever it might be and that works for your dog and then have them be calm and realize that this is actually the behavior you want them to show and again reward positively reward and then you can train commands on this platform so you could start with a stand with a sit with a down or whatever um, we are not doing this so we are mainly focusing on standing and we are focusing on a sit so she can do a sit and this is a sign for sit because I have a deaf dog so I use hand signals. Um, we made them up. <laughs> this is not the official one, this is just ours. So I would give a sit and she she can do a sit and she can also do a back to stand. Um, not perfectly because we're still obviously in the, in the beginning but I didn't really train sit and stand at the moment because this wasn't the most relevant for us. Um, and then what she actually likes doing is, and we started, um, this is again platform work a bit, so we started from four paws on to go back with the front paws down from the platform. So we call this two down. So we have two, two up, four up, two down, and then we go back up with all four. Um, this is something though I would not necessarily train right at the beginning, it's just because she loves it. Like this is something that comes really naturally to her. Um, she also is great at balancing out. So for her, it's absolutely no issue to get on a tree trunk. And even if it's like really bouncy or whatever, or wobbly, no issues whatsoever. So again, this is shape behavior um, and she balances uh, this out really nicely. She's not scared or anything. So she's really confident. I would make sure she's safe. But um, yeah, this is a behavior we use, but I would not highly recommend this at the beginning if you train a rescue dog far, far from it. But again, street dogs are like these kind of dogs. They are very confident in these kind of situations. So I think it's a bit different. Then we practiced catch. 
and catch Rambo the master catch Chucky doesn't catch at all and Panda had quite a fair share of struggle with it and now she's brilliant at catching she's actually very calm she is just very focused paws are on the ground and she just looks at you and waits for it to happen so I started catch basically as another form of food delivery to keep it a bit more interesting but yeah she is so good at it so we started with catching and then we transition from catching our normal catching into magic hand a magic hand is kind of like a catch on the go it's great for concepts like focus value for proximity and proximity is the desire your dog has to hang out with you because you're fun so it's kind of like your close proximity zone so the zone around you that this is a zone where your dog naturally wants to hang out with because it's fun for them and they just you know appreciate hanging out with you rather than seeing the value far far away from you which loads of dogs do when they're outside it also can help with confidence and arousal it's obviously great for loose leash walking walking in here but also for listening in distracting environments and i mentioned earlier that we're living in london so there is always something going on we have sometimes horses running around we have kids running around we have children playing soccer we have loads of people playing soccer loads of different people playing soccer um we have loads and loads of loads of dogs so there's like so so many dog walkers with like 15 dogs or whatever um you know coming on one point so there is always stuff happening there's squirrels there's food there's people whatever you name it and this is not even like london city city but it's a bit further out so there's loads of distractions happening so this is one we really really love and you can see in the video how she keeps the focus how she's able to focus on the food in my hand not for the whole time obviously because she's a young dog and we're just starting to practice but she's able to focus on the food to catch the food if she cannot catch food it's usually my own fault so she would then have the gaze downward so she's able to find it on the floor um, and keep sniffing the food out until she finds it and disengage from whatever is happening whatever is going on so she's not scanning the environment but she is rather focusing gaze downwards on the floor and obviously you can increase this with scatter feeding which I sometimes do um, so I would just throw some food out and let her find it and then when she comes back orients back to me I would reward her and have a higher value food with me but how you play magic hand is rather simple so you basically practice catch and then you start adding in some movement and then you can do catch on the go so you have catch and you have a dog next to you and you throw food while you while you walk and you have the attention of your dog gazing towards you and then you just basically throw out the food i already mentioned proximity and orientation game these are the two next ones we talk about so one is proximity vortex and proximity vortex can basically help you with engagement and disengagement as well as proximity concepts and it's a great game for recall for walking on the leash and relationship so how it works is you throw one piece of food out let them go to it let them find it and then when they are in back to you you reward this you give a cue like a yes or something that is rewarding for them to come back or you can simply deliver higher value food without the cue right when they come back to you so basically you throw something of lower value out and then you have the higher value with you very simple so lower value food out higher value food close to you so this is proximity vortex and while well, you would usually play this without a cue but it's quite similar to orientation game which i'm going to talk about now um, but yeah so basically the dog makes the connection of where you are is high value and outside is lower value then we have orientation game orientation game is great for focus it's great to boost disengagement but also to help with proximity with your dog and this game is great if you want to focus on loose leash walking if you want to focus on your recall if you want to work on your relationship you have with your dog and also listening to you and checking in with you so usually you start by putting some food either on the floor or throwing it out and you allow them to eat it and once they eat it they look up to you or orient it back to you and the moment they orient back to you this is where you give the cue like a yes or something that is rewarding for them where they can oh get encouraged to really turn around fully and come back to you and you feed them higher value when they're close with you and again you send them out you throw food away and when they aren't back to you you reward basically the check-in you do want to mark the choice to earn back to you 
and then you can take it outside and we actually took it outside right from the beginning and i've done it like this with all of my dogs again they are free roaming dogs so i think for them they're quite independent dogs and they they love food so we didn't really play too much at home um, I did this with Rambo a lot. I think basically if you keep rewarding interaction, if you are really aware of what your dog is actually doing, often they are looking at us, they check in with us, but we just ignore it or we are not aware. So if you have this awareness and you continuously, yes, reward this or generally reward them coming to you, then this has a similar effect, but you can obviously fast forward the results with orientation game. Um, great game to play so we did this quite a lot too one thing you can add on and this is like the next layer is to orient back from distraction so you can throw on again after you practice the basic orientation game and have gotten results obviously so you want to set up your, your dog for as much success as possible but then you can add in different challenge layers so you could then also throw something toward the distraction something that is semi-sexy right i would say not like your dogs like and game sexy right so something that is like semi-sexy like this could be a person it could be anything really um, and then if your dog is really interested in squirrels you might want to keep this one for last but yeah you can basically throw something towards the squirrel or whatever it might be the, the, the distraction and then if they return back to you you have high value food here but this would be not at the beginning like this would be later later on so um, yeah we're not there yet <laughs> <laughs> then we played middle or introduced middle to our training concept and middle is where your dog walks from behind between your legs and looks up so you have them in front of your body but you have the focus ideally gaze towards you or up to you and not to the outside and middle is a great tool to help build the concept of confidence the value for proximity to again see the value in hanging out with you arousal concepts so generally middle i feel like i mean it's obviously great for proximity etc but i think the main benefit for me is that it's just a really great way also to make them feel safe to make them feel comfortable i mean rambo loves this game anyways like he loves this and i like middle and then leg weaves but yeah, for Panda as well, it's something where she's really comfortable with, where she likes. And also if she's scared, I can just easily hold her. However, I would say, especially with street dogs, um, most of them might not be, or some of them might not be comfortable being below a human or have a human above them. So this is something you might want to be really, really careful with a rescue dog, but especially with a street dog, because this might be very, very unnatural for them at the beginning. So. Um, you might want to do this later on and try it out and again if they offer that shape but um, yeah I think for me personally I feel this is a game that is great for dogs that are kind of like confident or like at least used to humans already so um, take this one with a bit of caution and see again train the dog in front of you see if this is the right game for you you can obviously but then if you have it once nailed you can use this for recall you can use this for building confidence for reactivity but to not for reactivity but to help with reactivity and also to listening to you and you basically at the beginning just lure them into position so you have the dog in front of you you lure them from behind the through your legs and then in the middle position in front of you as you can see in the video and you keep doing this and then introducing the command middle once they have understood the concept and are standing basically in middle. And you want to keep practicing this, you want to throw food out and um, practice from both sides so it's easy for your dog to do middle from either side. Um, the mechanics for you might be a bit tricky at the beginning because it's a bit awkward to do just the mechanic a bit. But um, yeah, you will get the hang of it. And if you have a really big dog, then please be careful and just do it rather than middle, just do it next to you on the side. That's fine too. And just get them around, um, like to follow you around your body from different sides. And then one thing we do, and Panda loves this game, is that I hide food for her. Did I say your name, babe? Yes, I'm sorry. And I hide food for her in trees um, or on platforms where she has to jump up with her front paws and then sniff it all out. So she loves doing this and it's a really fun game also to keep her attention, to keep her focused. Um, we also started doing um, a bit of parkour work. So where I have her jump up on things, 
um, that are not too high or if they're too high obviously lift her down but where she can balance out well not really balance but it's just walk over big tree trunks um, and it's a great confidence boost I think also for her because yeah she just really loves it she enjoys it she's very good at it it's very natural for her so yeah we just basically um, are figuring out what she really enjoys doing and um, keep doing more of this I think the main part though is to have fun with your dog to train the dog in front of you to see what they are doing what they are what they like have fun and to make it a positive experience I think it's safe to say she arrived she's home and she's very much loved. Is my girl.